So today I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, who's a director of GBAC. Gavin, good to have you on uh, Straight Talk once again. How are things with you? Doing great, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, no complaints here. <laughs> no, not yet, anyway. Hey, I wanted to talk to you today just for a moment about something that um, some might find like an interesting topic. I guess we could say it's toilet talk. Okay. <laughs> so the reason why I'm bringing this up is I came across some articles recently, several articles, and I have two in front of me here that discuss the the fact that when you go into a restroom and it's addressing public restrooms and you flush the toilet, that this plume of bacteria and droplets uh, is is pushed out of the toilet. One article mentions uh, three feet up. Another one mentions it goes up six feet and can go over the stall walls and it all can linger. So when someone walks into that stall, they're breathing those droplets, those aerosol particles, which as we know, can contain coronavirus. One of the articles mentions that um, the stool of people that use the restrooms as they flush it, that the, part, the, uh, the virus particles can be in that as well, in their excrement. So this is kind of an interesting topic, I guess. When you go to a public restroom now, you need to hold your breath or uh, wear a respirator. What are your thoughts on that? What, what can we do and what should the cleaning industry do with this this type of information, which is in mainstream media now, now it's a it's a, it's a question, Jeff. That's been around for a long time. Now, uh, if you go back to 1907, William Horrocks, I think they called him Bill. He demonstrated that there was airborne transmission of sewage-related infectious diseases from the sewer drains, but he also showed that bacteria was spreading from one hospital to another through the air that was coming out of these sewer drains. So that's Gosh, that's over a hundred and, what is it? Do the math. Um, 114 years or thereabouts when he did that, when he first came about that. There's been lots of studies that have shown that, yes, whatever comes out of us, whether it be in our stools, our feces, our urine and vomit goes into the toilet, that when we flush it, whatever business we put in there, the toilet releases something that's called this toilet plume. And this is, this toilet plume needs to be defined. It's basically a spray filled with whatever we put in there. So it could probably has bacteria and viruses. How many does it have? Billions of bacteria and viruses. And, and research over the years has suggested that toilet plume could play a contributory role in the transmission of infectious diseases. Yeah, kind of a scary thought when you consider your normal routines in a public building. So what are the solutions? What are we going to do? Well, it's interesting that you, you talked about these times. And again, the research needs to be, like more research needs to be done, but research from 1975 showed that the germs emitted in this, this toilet plume or spray can linger in the air for up to six hours. They can disperse themselves all over the bathroom. So I, I don't know where you keep your toothbrush or your towels or, or even your beauty products, Jeff, <laughs> but if you keep them next to your toilet, they're probably getting covered with bacteria and virus every day. Yeah, um, so... Is there a solution for public buildings? Should something change? Should there be more cleaning or uh, more disinfecting? Well, there should be. And, and again, other studies have, show, have gone on to show that, you know, again, the risk is there. And it's all about understanding what this risk is. And again, from that 1975 study, there was an, an update, updated study that was done in 2015. And, then, and that study appeared in the American Journal of Infection Control. And it showed very clearly that toilets produce large droplets all these smaller aerosols during flushing. Again, this, this toilet plume. Again, it talked about the possible role of airborne transmission of, say, for example, norovirus, SARS, the flu, influenza. They, they, it also mentioned the vast majority of germs or microbes that are found in our urine, our feces, don't make us sick. They're normal. But it's what happens when someone who's sick, someone that has symptoms, someone who's infected, goes to the toilet, urine, feces, or vomit, and then what does that bacteria and viruses do when, when, you, when we flush it? So again, modern technology, you know, toilet technology today, we know minimizes, or, but, but it doesn't eliminate. It doesn't eliminate the amount of toilet plume that's shot into the air. And we're talking about billions of viruses and bacteria. So I don't know about where you live, Jeff, but in my house, my toilets are probably at least 30 years old. I haven't replaced them since I moved in. So I'm not using the latest toilet technology. So my toilets probably, you know, create a toilet plume. So what do I recommend? Shut the lid before you flush it. Shut the lid in a home is one thing, but in a commercial building, 
you don't see too many lids. No, you don't. You could learn to run really fast, uh, flush the toilet, run really fast, and that's not going to work either. So here's the importance here of not putting your head over the toilet when you flush it. Now, the other thing is washing your hands. Again, is we're worried about these bacteria and viruses that are caused by this toilet plume. We know that you know, the toilet plume creates really large droplets, but it also creates these smaller aerosols. And as you mentioned, you know, they could go uh, uh, any sort of distance. We know from research they can stay in the air for hours, even up to six hours. We know that they can be infectious. So you, again, if you're talking about, say, something like SARS-CoV-2 that causes COVID-19, you've got to, like most viruses and, and bacteria, they've got to get into your body. You've got to protect your eyes, nose and mouth. But what you've got to do is wash your hands. Wash your hands with soap and water, wash them properly. Um, and you've got to ensure that, you know, again, that when you're using the toilet, we try to minimize that risk. But it's, it's also, you know, what's that role of the cleaning crew, the, the janitorial staff? How do they clean them safely and securely, especially those toilets, that, those public toilets that, that don't have lids? Yeah. So it sounds like the solution is if you can't do a lid, uh, like you said, hold your breath and run, but uh, more cleaning, more disinfecting, which means a little more time spent on restroom care. It is, a little, yeah, definitely. And again, a lot of places I've been working with now where they don't have toilet their lids on their toilets, one of the suggestions I've made as the intervention, as what they should do to, to decrease the risk, and we're talking about the risk of spread of a transmission of infection, is add lids to the toilets. And they went, oh, I hadn't thought of that. And so they do. So now we're going back now doing another risk assessment, and they've, now they've added lids to the toilet. Again, these are areas that need more research to quantify it, but there are some good case studies out there that have shown transmission of infectious diseases from flushing toilets. So I, I bet right now, if anyone's watching this or thinking, I wonder if I can create a company that makes easy to install aftermarket toilet lids. Uh, maybe I'm gonna go do that myself. <laughs> it, it possibly could, but you, you think about when you get onto an airplane um, and you flush a toilet on an airplane. My, you know, when I flush the toilet on an airplane, it sounds like a jet engine. It really does say, it sound like it's taking off. And there's, there was a really good study that came out in 2005 where some members of the crew was sick. It was, this was an eight hour international flight. And what ended up happening was that the members of the crew and some of the passengers had norovirus, which, which you know, when you have norovirus, you have vomiting and diarrhea. Now, what they know is that all the crew and all the passengers that were sick on that flight with vomiting and diarrhea all went to certain toilets. And what they also know is that there was no episodes, no episodes of vomiting and diarrhea outside of the toilet, outside of the restroom. It all happened inside the restroom with very little soiling of vomit or feces on anything else, but it all went in the toilet. What they found that after the plane landed, over that 18 to 60 hours where other passengers became sick with vomiting and diarrhea with norovirus, they went to the same toilets and they went to the toilets more frequently than the other passengers that got sick. So we've got little studies like that that show that yes, toilets can or could play a role. And it's important, one, they have a lid, one, we clean them properly. And, and two, we ensure that we don't, you know, don't keep your beauty products, especially your toothbrush and your hairbrush next to the toilet in your own bathroom. Well, thank you, Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner um, for sharing the science with us and some practical tips as well. I don't know what your plan is today, but I'm gonna go move my toothbrush. Yes, yes, yes. I, we're going back to Little House on the Prairie with the outhouse. Uh, no, no, we, we, we don't have to do that just yet. But, but again, the technology is there that decreases this plume, but important to yeah, remove those personal items and close the lid and wash All your right. hands as well. Good advice. Talk to you later. Thanks, Jeff.